This is the 20th lecture of the course MTH204A for section B. Recall that we have uh, uh, we uh, we have uh, started classifying groups of uh, smaller orders from uh, from uh, 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 from uh, some previous lectures. So the last lecture also we classified. Uh, I mean we classified groups of order 30 and uh, some other groups. So we continue this lecture with classifications. So now first we will talk about groups of order 18. As I say that in this course uh, we will classify all finite groups having order less or equal to 30 except 16 and uh, 24 because for those uh, two orders a lot I mean uh, a lot of possibilities will occur and one has to consider nilpotent class and other and some other thing. So therefore, uh, the, this makes uh, their classification beyond the scope of this course. So except uh, these two orders, we will completely classify all groups uh, uh, of order up to 30. And also recall that uh, it is not the case that whatever machinery we have developed, uh, we can do only classification uh, up to order 30 by those uh, by uh, those uh, tools that we have developed it is not the case sure certainly we can uh, with i mean uh, with those tools you can also classify groups of uh, having order beyond 30 in fact some of the classifications that we have done earlier is in fact uh, quite general for example groups of order pq for any odd prime p so yeah so like 30 is just a number because we have to stop uh, somewhere. So and uh, like classifying all groups up to order 30 except those two. The main reason for that is to show you that show you or yeah. So main reason for that is to show you how the uh, tools and techniques that we have, uh, how the tools uh, and machinery that we have developed earlier uh, developed uh, uh, so far, how these machineries, how this. Uh, tools can be used to classify them. So yeah, so at least uh, I mean, once we classify all groups up to 30, then it will be quite clear to us how to apply them to, uh, for classification. So enough examples uh, thus we will get if we do the classification up to order 30. Okay. So for, uh, we will first talk about uh, groups of order 20, 18. So let uh, G be a group of order 18. So automatically by Silo's theorem, we have a subgroup uh, H and K of G. So these are the Silo, th so this is two times three square. So let H be the Silo three subgroup. So the Silo three subgroup has order nine and the Silo two subgroup has to have order two, has to have order two. And uh, from the product, product must have order, the product of H and K must have order 18 and uh, before, I mean, it's also easy to see that. Uh, so this is two things, okay? Because these are relatively prime order. So this implies G has to be isomorphic to H semi direct product K for some phi homomorphism phi. So for as I say, uh, I mean, uh, what I typically do is first we try to break the group as a semi direct product of uh, two proper subgroups. This is what we have done. So the next task is to find the isomorphic, consider find all the isomorphism types of H and K. So if, uh, the first case that we are going to consider is H is Z module H is Z module module N Z Z module nine Z. So H is cyclic. So if this is so, then what about ot H? So automorphism group of H. This will be having order phi nine, that is six, and uh, and uh, this the the group is abelian. So therefore, here we can from the immediately conclude this is Z modulo six Z. Okay, so it's a cyclic group. It means corresponding to every order, there is a unique subgroup. So like here, so the phi here is a map from k k to ot h k to ot h which is isomorphic to the, the cyclic group and uh, let us assume that uh, so what can we have here. So this is simple that if phi is trivial then 
then it's immediate that g has to be isomorphic to z modulo n z direct sum z modulo 2 z which is further isomorphic to z modulo 18 z if phi is non trivial non trivial then so uh, k is z modulo 2 z because k has order 2 so in this case so you have a unique homomorphism from this k which is a, uh, a cyclic of order 2 non trivial unique homomorphism to this cyclic group therefore in this case this is z modulo nz uh, z modulo 2 z and as we have already seen that this is nothing but isomorphic to d 18. So, when the silo 3 subgroup is cyclic, so, uh, so what we have proved is if for a group of order 18, if the silo 3 subgroup is cyclic, then the group is a either isomorphic to the cyclic group or the dihedral group. So, now let us consider the relatively difficult uh, case. So, now we can assume that z mod 3 z direct sum z mod 3 z. Okay. So, therefore, we must have ot h. So, it will be g l 2 of z modulo 3 z. So, what is the order for that order of that order I am leaving to you that this order is 48. Uh, now, also since this is, a, since this is a, the direct sum of two cyclic subgroups uh, of uh, order 3. So, let me uh, I mean let me uh, denote the let us consider the generator for this copy inside H uh, by A and the generator of this copy inside A of this copy generator of the copy of this uh, sum and uh, so by uh, let us consider denote that by B. So, simply therefore, we write h equal to direct a and b. Okay. So, here a is the, so here a is the generator of the copy of this summand and b is the generator of the copy of the other summand. Okay. And uh, let us also denote uh, the k, let k be generated by x. So, now uh, now let us talk about phi x. So, for, for, as expected that phi is a homomorphism from uh, phi is a homomorphism from G, uh, yeah, uh, ot h which is uh, nothing but isomorphic to G L 2 of z modulo 3 z. Okay. So, as expected phi is trivial if phi is trivial then G has to be isomorphic to z mod 3 z direct sum z mod 3 z direct sum z mod 2 z. Okay. Now, the question is what happens if phi is non trivial? Non trivial, then what can we say? So, phi is non trivial. So, what is phi? phi yeah, phi is a homomorphism here. So, this is k is generated by this if phi is non trivial then phi a phi of x will have order 2 right phi is non trivial let me write it here phi is non trivial implies phi of x has order 2. So, has order 2 what does that mean? It, so, phi of x is a map in automorphism group of H and which is isomorphic and every automorphism on H can be realized as an automorphic as a linear automorphism on the vector space z modulo 3 z direct sum z modulo 3 z over z modulo 3 z. Okay. So, so, therefore, phi x we can now regard phi x as a linear operator as a linear automorphism of this vector space. So, treating this linear, so this linear automorphism, so since these are isomorphic, so phi x is having order 2 means here also 
we must have this linear automorphism must satisfy this. So therefore, the minimal polynomial of phi x must divide this t, t square minus 1. Okay. So what are the possibilities from the minimal polynomial? The possibilities for the minimal polynomial is simply either it is t minus uh, either it is t plus 1 because t minus 1 cannot be there. t minus 1 means uh, phi x is identity but it is having order 2. So, the possibility is either phi, uh, first possibility is either phi is 1, either, either phi is minus identity, phi x is minus identity or it is having the eigenvalues both 1 and minus 1. So, let us take uh, the cases 1, but take up the cases 1 by 1. So, So, the first sub case phi x is having minus identity. So, okay, and uh, if phi x is minus identity, then how does phi x this automorphism act on A and B? Remember that this is nothing but uh, like here we have used the multiplicative notation and uh, and here it is written additively. So, by switching the notation, I mean switching the, I mean by switching from additive notation to the multiplicative one, we see that phi x is minus identity. This has the following effect on A and B, okay. Because like what is the isomorphism here? Remember there is a written multiplicative a to the power i comma b to the power j a to the power i b to the power j goes to i comma j, right. So, this is how it is acting and, uh, and uh, if, if this is the sketch situation, then we see that g is isomorphic to the following group, which we denote by g 18 defined as. So, here we have generators r, s and t, r and uh, uh, R S T R cube equal to S cube equal to T square equal to 1 R and S. So, R and S coming from the generators of the two copies of the two copies of this and that. So, that is how we write down the group from the I mean the way it is presented from that you will understand what I am talking about R S equal to S R. So, thus S and R they I mean both S and R since they commute and everything. So, like so here the subgroup generated by S and subgroup generated by R, their direct sum is going to be the cyclic subgroup of uh, cyclic subgroup of this group, cyclic subgroup of uh, order 9. And then furthermore, we have the following T R T inverse, here you will see that is R inverse and T S T inverse is S inverse, okay. That is how we write it. So, thus, so it is, I mean, uh, we call it a presentation for the group. You do not have to know exactly what this means. So, right now you can just treat it as a, as a way of writing the group. So, what we have already, what we have seen earlier that the, if these are our generators A and B and then T and if X is the generator for K, then, uh, then uh, X, when x acts on a by conjugation, it is giving a inverse similarly for b. So, thus uh, these are the relations, uh, so thus these are the relations that we have inside the group, okay. So, this is called denoted by g 18, this is one group. Now, the question is what happens in the other sub case? The second sub case is phi x is having both eigenvalues 1 and minus 1. So, remember phi x is a linear operator, invertible linear map on this on this th uh, vector space. It is having both minus 1 and 1 as its eigenvalues. Therefore, phi x is going to be a diagonalizable operator because the minimal polynomial splits. Hence, what this means is there must be an invertible matrix there must be an invertible matrix here 
or equivalently an invertible or equivalently uh, an uh, automorphism of H such that. So, let me write it in this way. So, they are uh, yes, so, so let me do it, uh, there exist invertible matrix such that P, P, if P inverse X P is just the matrix, right? And uh, using dot using the isomorphism equivalently we do have a automorphism, we do have the automorphism, there exists sigma in ot h such that the sigma phi x sigma inverse has the following effect on a and b. So, what are the effect? This is a because that is as I am keeps as I keep saying on. So, first we do on this uh, on the first few things on the vector space which is written additively and when it comes when we come back to group we just I mean uh, just uh, translate them in the multiplicative we just write down the same things in the multiplicative notations. So, like uh, so it uh, if e 1 and e 2 are uh, if like uh, what what do you what are we going to get let me do, let me directly the first write and then explain. Okay. So, because this matrix, if this is my if this is the matrix here, then the corresponding uh, the corresponding uh, automorphism written multiplicatively will fix A and move B to B inverse. So here we see that uh, whatever B phi is, whatever like whatever this phi is, if phi x, whatever this phi is, if phi x has both these as is eigenvalues, then the subgroup phi k, then the subgroup phi k, uh, yeah, so th then uh, phi x must be conjugate to the automorphism having this on the effect this uh, having this effect on A and B. So, maybe for uh, like uh, uh, yeah, so let me uh, then com complete the classification. So, in this case what do we have? So, again try to let me try to explain that uh, whatever B phi is phi x is always conjugate to the always conjugate to the uh, to the following subgroup of uh, to the following subgroup of ot h of order 2 what is the subgroup apart from the trivial apart from the identity automorphism the second uh, the non trivial uh, the unique non trivial automorphism would be this one sending a to a and b to b inverse okay so whatever the phi is as long as phi x is having both these as eigen values then the if phi k must be conjugate with the subgroup must be conjugate phi phi has to be conjugate with the subgroup of ot h of order 2 okay, having this as the unique non entity element. So, therefore, in this case this shows we are going to get a, a unique non abelian group structure and uh, yeah. So, whatever phi is non trivial of course, then since this is conjugate to that. So, in, we are going to get a unique group structure and then what is that structure? It is not enough to consider this only this uh, automorphism. So, let me rather uh, like okay. So, denote phi prime uh, yeah. So, I think this is better. So, by denote phi uh, denote this one okay. Yeah. So, let us uh, denote this by this. So, what this means is uh, automorphism ha huh. so this is my phi prime so therefore uh, uh, if phi x is uh, if phi is non trivial then we see that as i said h semi direct product k by phi has to be isomorphic to h semi direct product phi k 
that's we have already seen because uh, the image of phi prime and image of k they are conjugate. So, it's in this case what is the non unique non abelian group structure is enough to find this ok. Now, let us do that which is rather easier which is rather easier. So, this is simply z modulo 3 z. So, dz modulo 2 z or let, let me write it x by phi prime and then uh, you can easily do it right because x is central uh, now uh, x is x is uh, fixing x is acting trivially upon a. So, a is being central uh, a yeah. So, x is being fixed by a. So, therefore, by the previous theorems on simp uh, that we have done on simplifications of uh, uh, symmetric products, we can simply write this as ok. So, you can take this part out and what we have? So, this is isomorphic to z modulo 3 z direct, this is z modulo 3 z, this is z modulo 2 z and here we see that x by phi star. So, uh, so in this group x b x inverse is going to be b inverse ok. So, is the unique. So, this is a sub uh, uh, cyclic group of order 2 and this is the unique non trivial. So, here it is just not just appropriate to write uh, ok. So, phi prime is a map from k to ah. Uh, so, it is not appropriate to write k, I mean here k prime yeah. So, so this is a this is a sub uh, cyclic group of order 2 this is also a cyclic group and here we have the unique unique uh, here we have the unique uh, uh, homomorphism non trivial homomorphism namely sending b to b inverse. So, this has to be nothing but so z modulo 3 z by non unique non -tri unique non trivial homomorphism z modulo 2 z. So, it is going to be s 3 right. So, it is going to be z modulo 3 z uh, z modulo 2 z. So, this is d 6, d 6 and s 3 they are same. So, therefore, z modulo 3 z direct sum s 3 ok, direct product s 3. So, all total apart uh, what have we got? In this case, we had only two group structure ok, here we have only two group structures that is the cyclic one and d 18. Here, then, uh, then uh, in this case, in the uh, in the case two, when this is one abelian, and then followed by this is a non-abelian one, and this. So the final step is we have to talk about whether uh, we have to find out uh, how many of them are and which pairs are isomorphic and which pairs are not. Of course, like abelian ones are not going to be isomorphic to the non abelian ones. Among the abelian ones, z this cyclic group and this, they are going to be, of course, uh, different. Only two abelian groups we can see of this order. Now, let us talk about the non abelian ones. So, how many non abelian structures are there? Here we get one, I mean, here we get one uh, in this, uh, yeah. So, let me just see. So, how many non abelian ones we obtain? So, d 18 is 1 and we have. So, basically 3 non abelian ones we obtain. So, let us so d 18 the cyclic uh, the silo 3 subgroup of d 18 is cyclic right, but that is not the case for any of the any of the I mean that is not the case for this or that right because all this has originated when the cyclic subgroup is not cyclic and the silo subgroup is not cyclic. So, therefore, it shows d 18 cannot be isomorphic to this or that ok. Now, we just have to make sure that uh, this and this they are not going to be isomorphic. So, the here I should leave it as an exercise may be so, that we can do by means of center. 
So, uh, exercise is what is center of the routine verification, what is center of G18. Okay. So, you can immediately see that the center of G18 is trivial. That will be clear from this, just uh, like the way you, uh, the way you determine the center of dihedral groups. So, in the exactly in the same way, you can show the center here is trivial, but the center of this group is uh, center of Z modulo 3 Z times center, uh, direct product center of S3, center of S3 is trivial, but center of Z modulo 3 Z is of course, Z modulus is itself because it is abelian. So, this has, this is having non-trivial center and this is having trivial center. So, therefore, now, so G18 and this group, they are going to be non-isomorphic. So, all total, we now see that up to, uh, 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 there are exactly 5 group structures of order 18, 2 are abelian and 3 are three of the, the, I mean the rest are non-abelian and among the non-abelian also we have the some, we have uh, the a known one namely the dihedral group and this is just the symmetry group together with the cyclic group direct product and this is indeed a new group, okay. All right, so that kind of finishes the classifications of groups of order, third, uh, order th 18. Now, uh, we will talk about uh, groups of order 20. Okay. So, like uh, so groups of order 20. So, it is slightly more uh, complicated to deal with. So, let uh, G be a group of order 20. Uh, so, 20 is 2 times uh, 2 square times 5. So, let H be the silo silo 5 subgroup of uh, silo 5 subgroup of uh, G. And uh, so, since silo 5 subgroup uh, I mean, uh, from Silo's theorem, we can immediately see that the Silo 5 subgroup has to be normal because other option should be 6 or 11, but these are not divisors of uh, tw uh, 20. So, Silo 5 subgroup is normal. So, let this be spanned by, uh, let this be generated by Y and, uh, and then also let K be the Silo, uh, K be a Silo 2 subgroup. K be a silo 2 subgroup. As expected that H and K, they are having trivial intersection because they are having relatively prime order and then this, uh, it easily follows that H, K is going to be G. Of course, as I said, the intersection is trivial. So, by recognition theorem, it is it immediately tells us that G has to be isomorphic to the semi direct product of H and K for some homomorphism from H to K, K to ot H. So, therefore, we now have to find all possible, consider all possible isomorphism types of H and K and then you have to see all possible homomorphisms from K to ot H. So, the first case that we should consider is because for H we do not have anything else, H is just isomorphic to Z modulo 5 Z. For K we have two possible possibilities. Z modulo 4 Z and Z modulo 2 direct sum Z modulo 2. So, we take the simplest one that is uh, let K be isomorphic to Z modulo 4 Z. So, if this is the case then what do we have? Phi is trivial implies this is simply Z modulo 5 Z direct sum uh, direct sum Z modulo 4 Z which is nothing but the cyclic group Z modulo 20 Z. Okay. Now, the question is what happens if phi is non-trivial, phi is non-trivial then. So, 
So, like assume that uh, right, uh, let this be generated by x. So, if phi is non-trivial, so like phi is an automorphism from k to homomorphism from k to what h, right? If phi is non-trivial, then phi of x, that, that is the image of the generator, is going to be either it is going to be either uh, of order two or four, okay? And what is this? So this is since h is z modulo 5 z up to so this is z modulo 4 z. Okay. Being cyclic, it has unique subgroups corresponding to each order. Now, what can we say now? So, if phi x has order 2, So, let us take one by one, phi x is having order 2, so z modulo 4 z is a unique element of order 2, right? And uh, so, uniqueness is established by the cyclic structure and uh, since this is an abelian group, h is an abelian group, immediately we can find the unique automorphism of order 2, namely the inversion. So, therefore, it shows that if this is the case, then phi x must have the following, it should send y to y inverse, okay? Because sending y to y inverse, the homomorphism that sends y to y inverse is going to have order 2 in OTH and the cyclic structure ensures that is a unique one. Therefore, in this case, the situation is the following that the group is generated by two elements, y and x. Okay, y has order, y has order 5, x has order 4, x has order 4 and conjugation of y by x makes it y inverse. So, this group is, I mean, uh, in, in, in the style that uh, which we, which I mean, the, yeah, in, uh, as a, just a minute, huh. so we can write this group in the, in the style which we have adopted because this gives a clear idea about the group that what are the elements that are generating and what are the relations among them. So, in this uh, fashion we can write the group as follows x y having two generators y is having order 5 x to the power 4 equal to identity x y x inverse is y inverse. Okay. So, in this case we see if phi x is in order 2, then g must be isomorphic to the group generated by two elements where having this uh, relations. So, this is called g 20, this group is called g 20, okay. Now, we will consider the other case, phi x has order 4, then uh, the situation is that uh, like again. Uh, so, here like if phi x is order 4, then uh, like uh, x can go to, so there are exactly two elements of order 4, right? So, x can go to either of them, but however, whatever it happens, the phi k is going to be the same subgroup, right? So, in this case, in this case, we are going to get a unique non-abelian group structure because the image is going to be the unique uh, image is going to be a, a, this this whole uh, group g mod z modulo 4 z only. So, therefore, it is enough to determine the structure when phi x denotes when phi x stand is this automorphism having order 4. So, like here uh, can we establish can we find uh, explicitly find out an automorphism of h which is having order 4 namely sending e, e, y to y square. So, this automorphism sending y to y square, this is automorphism, this is this automorphism is having order 4 here. So, yeah, and as I said, uh, yeah, so the if phi x is having order 4, so either phi can go to this automorphism which sends y to y inverse or the inverse of this automorphism, right? But how, whatever you do, we are, we are going to get the same non-abelian group. Hence, 
it's enough to consider enough to assume that phi x is uh, phi, phi x is this automorphism and in this case the group that we obtain is uh, like as earlier of course it will be generated by two elements x and y the relations this relation is always going to be there the only thing that will change is how x acts on y so unlike the previous one here the action of x on y when x is as follows okay so this is called the frobenius group of order 20 frobenius group of order 20 Okay. So, the main point is that depending upon phi x is having order 2 or 4 that depends upon how x will act on y. So, in the first case this is the action and in the case this is the action. So, these two give us two different I mean two groups of course they are different we have to prove and uh, well so it is very natural to us that this group which is perhaps defined in a very artificial way whether this whether uh, we can see some whether we have any concrete realization of this group or not that is whether we know some concrete group which is isomorphic to that of course we have one so so inside s5 you take any no, any silo 5 subgroup any silo 5 subgroup so since they are conjugate to each other their normalizers are going to be isomorphic so you take any iso, uh, any silo 5 subgroup so say, that's why i'm saying that it's enough to consider any then its normalizer is isomorphic to F20 that you can immediately check in particular like uh, for a concrete description if you take the silo subgroup to be the subgroup generated by the 5 cycle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, the normalizer is going to be the normalizer of uh, the subgroup uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 you can easily see that the normalizer is generated by 2 elements 2, 3, 4, 5 and of course 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this group is isomorphic to this group is isomorphic to this Frobenius group. Okay. All right. And, uh, and of course, the question is whether this G20 and F20 whether they are isomorphic or not that I would like to leave uh, to you as an exercise because if this two would mean isomorphic, if this two would be isomorphic, then this group F20 must have an element of order 5, an element of order 4, element of order 5 let us say A, an element of order 4 B such that uh, B A B inverse is A inverse right. An element as I again let me repeat that if this two would be isomorphic then there would be an element of order 5 which has to be the isomor which has to be the image of the y under isomorphism similarly there will be an element of order 4 b such that b a b inverse will be b inverse but uh, that actually does not happen so i leave uh, uh, that routine verification to you maybe i should also here let me concrete that uh, uh, prove that in fact, I have told you just now how to prove, prove that G20 equal to F20. Okay. The hint for the proof is if uh, if these are two are isomorphic, then this must contain element A of order five and element B of order four such that A B uh, B A B inverse has to be A inverse because these are going to be the images of X and Y here. But here the way these things are the way these generators are related that uh, I mean that prevents uh, uh, that prevents uh, 
B A B inverse B A B inverse to become A inverse. So, that verification you have to do ok. So, now let us consider the second case. So, the first case first case is uh, where the k is isomorphic to z modulo 4 z. So, let me just summarize that when k the si when the silo 2 subgroup is cyclic then we have exactly 3 group structures one is abelian and these two are non abelian ok. And, uh, and, uh, and among these 3 no 2 of them are isomorphic. Now, let us consider the second case. So, what is the second case? Second case is uh, uh, case 2, case 2 is k is not cyclic that is k is isomorphic to z modulo 2 z direct sum z modulo 2 z and uh, also of course, we know that uh, already we have seen ot h. So, yeah, so ot h is always has to be isomorphic to z modulo 4 z. So, thus in this case the phi is a homomorphism from z mod 2 plus z mod 2 to z mod 4 right. So, therefore, phi cannot be injective because they then it will then the, the it will be an isomorphism which is not possible. So, in this case phi cannot be injective phi cannot be injective, phi cannot be injective. So, like uh, then what are the possibilities? Of course, phi is trivial, phi is trivial this possibility leads us to z mod 4 z. So, sorry z mod 5 z direct sum this z mod 2 z z mod 2 z. Now, let us take the case uh, phi is non trivial. So, here we will proceed uh, in the way uh, here uh, the way uh, yeah. So, here we will proceed in this way that uh, if phi is non trivial then of course, the kernel of phi. So, if phi is non trivial the kernel phi has to be has to have order 2 ok. And uh, since k is of the form z mod 2 plus z mod 2. So, like what we can do is uh, if we take the generator a of kernel phi and then take any b outside this then immediately k can be written as ok. So, I mean this argument so uh, the same uh, this argument which I mean exactly similar to what we have uh, considered in the last lecture is exactly similar argument. So, in this case you see that uh, like uh, yeah. So, the action of A on Y is uh, the action of A on Y is trivial right and the action of B on Y is. So, what we have here is let me again say that uh, A Y A inverse is y and uh, b is uh, the image of b is going to have order 2. So, order 2 means uh, like uh, uh, b y b inverse must have y inverse. So, when this is the case what is the uh, what is the uh, group structure that we obtain g must be isomorphic to so, again you see this kind of argument we have already used uh, just a minute it's rather the opposite one. Okay. And uh, like uh, A is in the centralizer of Y hence we can simply take it out And here the homomorphism is of course, a non-trivial one and that now we know what to do. This is simply ok. So, again for we can go one step further that will make things much more clear. Uh, just a minute ah, ok fine. Uh, this is uh, or perhaps yeah. So, that is better we can also take A inside 
because the a, a b also acts on a trivially. So, this is so all this is by means of the uh, simplification there is the theorem on the simplification which we have done earlier. Okay. So, this is sim so y is z modulo 5 z this is z modulo 2 z so is isomorphic to z modulo 10 z semi direct product z modulo 2 z by a non trivial homomorphism which of course has to be unique. So, yeah because yeah so by a non trivial homomorphism yes so the, in that case this has to be d 20 because z modulo 10 z modulo 2 by a non trivial homomorphism this we are we are what we have already seen. Okay. So, in this case what we say, thus what we have seen is if phi is non trivial then if phi is non trivial. So, how many such non trivial phi will how many such phi will exist. So, it is like, like we will have exactly 3 such phi's right sending each of the 3 non oriented elements to if sending each of this 3 non oriented elements to the trivial element of it to the uh, yeah, so to the identity automorphism of H, right? So we have, we have three such non-trivial homomorphism, and uh, like uh, all three will lead us to the dihedral group D20. The analysis, so whatever the whatever this uh, uh, phi is, whatever this phi is, whatever non-trivial phi we are considering here that always gives me whatever we consider here that gives me this unique this dihedral group only. Okay. So, it is uh, therefore, in this case also we are done and uh, of course, we have to convince ourselves that uh, uh, whatever uh, so, this is not isomorphic to any of the subgroups obtained previously. So, the previous ones have always been found pairwise non isomorphic and here it will be of course, pairwise non isomorphic the reason for which is that the silo 2 subgroup of D 20 is. So, the silo 2 subgroup in this situation the D of D 20 is non cyclic. However, in, uh, in all the previous cases the silo 2 subgroup has been uh, yeah. So, in all the previous cases the silo 2 subgroup has been cyclic. So, D 20 cannot be isomorphic to G 20 or F 20 and of course, there is no question of being isomorphic with the abelian ones. Okay. So, like as I said that my aim will be to classify all groups up to order 30 except uh, 16, 16 and 24. So, in that list I mean, uh, I mean uh, in that list that is a list of 28 uh, yeah, list of such 28 uh, uh, numbers only one uh, like except uh, so, let me just try to recall whether I missed something or not. Uh, yeah, so, 11 is done, 12 is also done, 13 is cyclic, 14 uh, is 2 times 7. So, that is how you see that uh, like uh, here we have done 20 then 18. So, only the thing which is left is groups of order 28. Let us do that now. So, groups of order 28. So, with this our classification of groups of smaller orders, well smaller means here at max 30, we have to finish somewhere right. So, at max 30, for example, beyond 30, 31 is a prime, you can immediately say cyclic. So, of course, you can go beyond 30, but we have to finish somewhere. So, so up to 30 except 14, except 16 and 24, we are only left with 28. So, let us do that now. So, the analysis for 28 is also quite simple groups of order order 28. So, in 28 we have this let this be the silo subgroup silo 7 subgroup which has to be normal from Silo's theorem and uh, k be a silo let k a silo 2 subgroup ok. 
Okay, so like earlier, uh, these have relatively. So this is having order four. This is having order seven. So like earlier, we can see that uh, it satis uh, it satisfies all the conditions for the I mean in the hypothesis uh, of the recognition theorem. So that G has to be isomorphic to H semi-direct product K for some homomorphism phi. Now for 7 here we do not have any choice but for K we have two choices. So in this case I will simply like uh, tell you how to go ahead because the argument is very very simple to uh, that of uh, 20. So the first case will be K is isomorphic to Z modulo 4 Z. Okay. So if this is Z modulo 4 Z and uh, you see here the odd h has to be z modulo 6z. So, phi cannot be 1 1 right because then this the automorphism group of h which is a group of order 6 will contain a subgroup of order 4 which is not possible by means of Lagrange's theorem. Okay. So, in this case phi cannot be 1 1 phi cannot be phi cannot be 1 1. Uh, so, once phi is therefore, uh, like if phi cannot be 1 1, what are the possibilities? Uh, so, one possibility is of course, phi is trivial. Here I will simply tell you because the argument is and the strategy and every argument is exactly similar to the previous one. So, this shows that G has to be isomorphic to Z modulo 7 Z, Z modulo 4 Z, which is nothing but isomorphic to Z modulo 28 Z. Okay, so, this is thus we get cyclic one, then phi is non trivial. So, non trivial means uh, uh, again uh, this is having order 6, right? Z uh, having order 6 and uh, this is uh, of course uh, psi ot, ot h, ot h is going to be a since the prime so ot h is z modulo 6 z, let me do it here, ot h is having z modulo 6 z. So, what do we get in this situation? Uh, so, uh, like uh, yes. So, the generator of K, so this case is like the generator of K, the image of that under phi can have only order 2, right? Because uh, this is a subgroup of order having order 6. So, the image of the generator of K can have only order divisor of both 4 and 4 and 6. Since it is non trivial, it has to be the since the homomorphism is non trivial it has to be 2. So, therefore, in this case, so yeah, so okay, let me put you write it in this way. So, phi x must have order 2. So, order 2 automorphism here you see this is nothing but that must send the generator y to y inverse. Okay. So, like earlier in this case the group that we obtain is of course, it is generated by two elements, uh, it is generated by two elements. Let me, uh, so let me do it by y as well. So, it is generated by two elements y and x. So, like as I again let me tell you that this is just a, I mean way of writing, uh, right now we do not attach any formal meaning to this notation, this is a way of writing, uh, uh, right now you can just consider it just a, another way of writing the group, expressing the group in terms of is generators and the relations among the generators. So, the group is again the group is uh, the this one which we are considering that uh, uh, h is this, k is this and phi x is this, phi x is this yeah. And also in z modulo 6 z uh, like uh, we have a unique subgroup of order 2 right. So, yeah. so we have a unique subgroup of order 2. So, we do have a unique automorphism of uh, the cyclic structure ensures that we have a unique structure of we have a unique automorphism of order 2 all right and uh, 
this one, one already we know, so therefore this is the one. So this is, a, as I said, uh, the, this kind of arguments we have been using uh, repeatedly. So here y is to the power 7, x to the power 4 is 1 and the action of uh, x on y is y inverse. Okay. So yeah, if uh, phi is non-trivial, then the group that we obtain is written by this notation. Now let us finally consider the other case that is uh, that is uh, uh, maybe this here. Okay, I should let, let that be intact and remove this. So the final case that which we are going to consider is the final case that we are going to consider is the following. When case two is K is isomorphic to uh, okay. So, like earlier, we have uh, now phi is a homomorphism from this group to that group, okay. And uh, of course, phi cannot be one one. Therefore, the, what about the kernel of phi? Kernel of phi is either, uh, so, so kernel of phi cannot be trivial, so kernel of phi can, can be whole k or it is a subgroup of order 2, okay. So kernel of phi is trivial as you, of course it will lead us to uh, z modulo 7z. Z modulo 2Z, Z modulo 2Z and phi is non-trivial. So the kernel of phi is having order 2, so we can proceed exactly like this. That is uh, whatever be the phi is, so like how many such phi's are there, Th three such phi's are there. In, in any case, we let we, we, we pick, we, we take the generator, unique generator of the kernel, then pick anything outside that, pick anything outside that and then we see that uh, uh, the group has to be the dihedral group. So in this case we obtain, it has to be D28. So exactly you see the scenario is exactly same. The phi is uh, having, uh, kernel is having order 2, so like as I said. So this kind of argument we have, uh, we are using it uh, at three times at least, if not more. Anyway, so thus how many group structures we obtain? This is one cyclic. So these are the two abelian structures and then non-abelian structures, this is and this. And of course they are not isomorphic because silo two subgroup here is cyclic and here the silo two subgroup is non-cyclic. So, for total we see that, uh, yeah, so therefore uh, they must D28 cannot be isomorphic to this. So, in this case we obtain two abelian groups and two non-abelian groups of order 28. Thus, except orders 16 and 24, this finishes the classification, this finishes the classifications of all groups up to order 30. And by now, uh, I mean, uh, by the repeated use of these techniques, uh, it, I mean, you must, uh, I mean, uh, you must be, I don't know how to put it. So, like, you see that in all the classification problems, the techniques that, I mean, in both in yesterday, both in the previous class and in this class, you see the techniques are very much, the, I mean, the same technique plus that is breaking it into isomorphism into semi-direct products, then finding isomorphism types of H and K, then finding all possible types of phi and then finally try to find, trying to finally we see which pairs of semi-direct products are non-isomorphic. So I mean this like uh, uh, we have applied the strategy, we have applied the techniques uh, repeatedly 
uh, in these two lectures. So, therefore, uh, I presume that now, I mean, you must, uh, I mean, you must make yourself uh, comfortable with that because, uh, like, uh, you you have uh, because you have seen that how uh, these things can be used to classify groups. You must be able to make yourself comfortable with that. All right. In a few, I have a few minutes left where I can discuss something else. So this classification, this major of the thing is done. Now I should talk about something else. So what the uh, what we, I'm going to talk about now? Of course, today I cannot finish. So I maybe just state or prove a small lemma, and then continue uh, continue uh, in the next lecture. Automorphisms of of S n. Okay. So, what we are going to do is given any n, we, we would like to know, we would like to determine this group. Okay. We will determine this group. Of course, one thing is clear that from S n to odd S n, we have an injective homomorphism, namely like inner automorphisms namely the inner automorphism. So, each sigma gives rise an inner automorphism by sigma. So, in S n, in S n which is a subgroup of odd S n and in S n is isomorphic to S n modulo Z S n, who is but Z S n is trivial. So, therefore, we see S n has a natural copy inside odd S n. Okay. Now the question is whether we do have any auto, any further automorphism other than the inner automorphism, right? So what we are going to prove is if n not equal to 6, then we do not have any such automorphism. That is, ought in this case, ought Sn is isomorphic to Sn because in that case there is no automorphism which is not inner and then of course we, we if n equal to 6 we will show that there is a unique automorphism in there is a unique automorphism uh, unique automorphism uh, yeah so okay so maybe put in better way so when n equal to 6, we will construct an automorphism of S, uh, uh, S 6 which is not inner and uh, uh, furthermore, we prove that ot S 6 by in S 6 is isomorphic to Z modulo 2 Z. So, that is what we are going to prove. Uh, I mean, we aim to prove, uh, but today of course, I cannot prove this. So, let me just state uh, the main lemma and then uh, we will finish this lecture. So, the following lemma is going to be the instrumental for the proof of uh, this is, uh, is uh, of course, let n is greater or equal to 3 and uh, let us phi be an automorphism of S n. If phi, phi takes transpositions to transpositions, transposition. So what it means is, the image of a transposition is again a transposition to transpositions. Implies phi is inner. this is what we will prove and uh, so this holds for any n greater or equal to 3 when n is not equal to 6 we will show that this is indeed the case that all the automorphisms must when n is greater yeah so this is for any n when n is not equal to 6 then we will separately show by a combinatorial argument that uh, all the automorphisms necessarily take transpositions to transpositions 
So that will, so in view of this lemma, which is yet to be proved, in the next lecture I will prove, so in view of this lemma, that will immediately settle this claim. Okay. So again let me remind, tell you that this lemma together with, when we will be together with, when any not equal to 6, any automorphism takes, necessarily any automorphism takes transpositions to transpositions, these two things will settle this and the other case we have to deal with uh, separately. Okay. So, this is what we, we are going to do in the next lecture. So, just with this announcement, I finished the, yeah, I finished this, uh, just a minute, yeah. So, this is what we are going to do in the next lecture. Yeah. So, with this announcement, I will finish this lecture.